Fedora 37 will be the next iteration of the very popular Linux-based operating system. It's been recently released as beta, so we have installed it in VirtualBox to check it out. Stay with us! Fedora 37 will be released in the second part of October, but it is already nicely shaping up, so we will highlight some of the things this increasingly popular operating system is bringing to end users. Right after the installation, we were met with a nice setup app that will help you in making the first steps with Fedora. It's rather self-explanatory and easy to follow up. There, you've got the option to enable third-party repositories, so that you can have the access to additional software from selected external sources, including some proprietary software. This is important because Fedora sticks to completely open-source repositories by default. You can connect to your online accounts if you like, and then the next step is to set up your local account. And that's it you can start using Fedora Linux. Fedora 37 also includes a nice and informative welcome tour, which will help you in getting familiarized with Fedora's design principles and how the system works. So, for instance, by pressing the super key, you get an overview of open windows and apps. If you need to search for a file or an app, all you need to do is just start typing, as we did here for the files application. When you need to divide tasks, for instance, you can do it by assigning them to different workspaces or virtual desktops. Fedora 37 also supports vertical and horizontal swipes on your touchpad, and that's basically it. The star of the show in Fedora 37 is the GNOME desktop environment version 43. In this release, the system tray area in GNOME 43 has got a visual refresh, so now it's got these pills like buttons and it looks a lot like an Android quick toggle bar. And you get easy access to the system settings app. Now you don't have to enter the setting app to switch the desktop theme. You can easily change it in the GNOME desktop menu in the upper right hand corner. There you can turn on the night light mode too. Notifications and calendar are in the middle of the top bar as usual, while the activities button is still in the right hand corner. By clicking the app grid in the dock, you can access all of your installed apps. The apps Fedora 37 offers out of the box make you productive from the get-go. As always, the desktop is not active, but still, by right-clicking it, you can change the default wallpaper. And Fedora 37 also offers light and dark variants of available desktop backgrounds. And as with any other Linux distribution we have tested so far, Fedora 37 Beta also offers updates right after the installation. Those include system updates, security and bug fixes, and performance improvements. When the process is finished, 
you'll need to restart and update your system. An important issue with an operating system is how a user can get apps for her or his everyday work. In Fedora's software app, a user gets a vast array of apps from Fedora's repositories. Third-party repositories are enabled too. The Flatpak platform itself is enabled. However, the very popular FlatHub repository where users should pull updated apps from is not enabled by default. So, for instance, we certainly know that the Brave browser is available as a Flatpak application, but it cannot be found in Fedora's software app out of the box. That's why the easiest thing you can do is to visit Flatpak's official site and pick up the command needed to enable the FlatHub support in Fedora software app. We'll paste it into terminal, and that's it! Now, if you search for Brave browser in the software app, you'll find it there. As you can see, now, Fedora's software app's repositories have one more row added, after we have enabled the FlatHub support as well. Now, if you happen to be a new Linux user, let us again explain how the GNOME desktop environment works and what is its workflow. The problem for new users sometimes is the fact that Fedora and GNOME do not offer a minimize button by default, so you can't minimize your apps. Again, it's similar to your Android phone. So, if you have multiple apps open, the way you switch between apps is to activate the overview by pressing the super key. Also, you can move an app to a different workspace or virtual space. And if you need an app that's not pinned in the dock, you can simply start an overview and then click the app grid in the dock and have all the installed apps available for clicking. All in all, with this new release, Fedora is an even more polished and consistent operating system. Fedora, with its stock GNOME, is more and more on par with proprietary operating systems and desktop environments, and in our view, it has a look and feel of the finished article. What's your opinion on Fedora 37 and GNOME 43? Would you recommend it to new Linux users? Tell us in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.